artist's work and you think that you know what it's about, but only when you really get to know them do you start understanding all the small nuances that are in the work that I don't necessarily get. So I'm kind of looking at art as a way of experience for people to be able to look at it. You can't ever see the whole story. You don't ever get the full picture. You have to reposition yourself, you have to look from a different angle, you have to think about it perhaps in a different way. I love watching people's reactions because in a gallery space, they always love not to touch. And I always go and say, you can put your whole hand in there. And they're like, oh, really? <laughs> Obviously, children have a ball too. I think that that kind of transformation that you go through during the creation process is important. But then I'm also interested in how there's transformation in the viewer when they're actually looking at the work and they're engaging with the art. What are they taking away from that? How does that influence them going forward? I am always interested in, in the, the microscopic or the, the micro within the macro, which even if you look within each cable, they're still made up of lots of smaller ones. So how do we as individuals fit within that space? I suppose I work in two visually quite different ways, um, the one being the copper work and the other one being the coal and the calcium carbonate work. And while Everything seems quite separate. To me, it's integrally connected because it is about compounds, it's about what's in the earth, it's about what we use as resources and how we use it. There's a finite amount of copper in the globe and when that runs out, where will we go? I'd heard about Robert Rauschenberg doing screen prints using corrosive materials on metal and that really inspired me because I loved the idea of the eating away into the metal, the, the destruction of the metal as you put an image on it. And so I started experimenting and I couldn't get anything like what his works looked like, but I came up with my own process. My works are perhaps about whispers. They're, they're not the, the clear first voice or the, the shout that you might expect. But these are the shadows, the duplicates, the replacements, the transformed version of the original. We have a very anthropomorphic kind of view where the human is always at the center and then everything else is around us and we can use everything. I focus a lot on transformative narratives in the artwork. And that's not only relating to the actual image and the subject matter in, in the image, which is in like a state of flux, but it also is important for me as the artist, you know, the transformation that I go through while I'm dealing with um, a lot of the natural disasters and things that we've had this year with the Amazon fires and in Greenland, the glacier melting and things like that. For me, I have a lot of empathy for nature and so I feel really strongly about those kind of things. Studies have shown that when people spend more time in nature, they're actually much more likely to start getting involved with conservation and you know, doing ground level work. 